Hey guys, welcome back to Bible Fun with the Duns. Today we're studying Mark chapter 7. Let's get started. Oh yeah, so, <laughs> so the Pharisees and the <clears throat> scribes. scribes were watching Jesus' and his disciples eat and they were like, what? You didn't wash your hands before you did it. And they were like, it was this big deal. Like the world was going to end. And Jesus is like, mm -mm. Uh, y'all are all caught up in, oh no, we didn't wash our hands. And you're not even caught up in, oh, I need to worship Jesus. Ooh, mm. I like it. And so what I got from that, I'm sorry. <laughs> what I got from that is we need to put God first and uh care about him uh and care about him more than our other things that's that right need. so this little bitty situation becomes a huge teaching moment um for the for the pharisees well that was the plan we'll learn that they're pretty hard-headed we're that's nothing right. like that right no, never, okay. not, not okay. Not <laughs> the pharisees and the scribes it becomes a, a big lesson because the thing is this is not really about their hand washing. This is about their heart. And um, when what we see here with the Pharisees and the scribes, and we also see it in the Sadducees when we read about them in the New Testament, um, we see that they have these man made rules. And I think maybe they started with decent intentions, rules that they made to help them follow and obey God's law. But over time, they have become a checklist, and they have become tradition, and this is the way we do it, and if you don't do it this way, you're a bad person, you don't even love the Lord, when that's not, the things that they're looking for in other people, that's not what God has told us in his word. And so, over time, their own man-made laws have become more important to them, and they're less concerned about following um, God's laws. And so Jesus calls them out because he sees this not about washing hands. He sees this as a heart issue. And he says, you know what? Isaiah told us all. He warned us all about this. This was going to happen. And in verse six and seven, it, he quotes Isaiah and it says, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. They worship me in vain, teaching, doc, teaching as doctrines, human commands. So these people are supposed to be the church-going people. They're supposed to be the religious people. Um, and so they're, they're really worried about looking good. They're really worried about looking like the good church-going people that they want to look like. But Jesus sees through that and he sees their hearts and they're not concerned at all about their relationship with God. They're not really concerned with following God's law. And Jesus is saying... You're more worried about what man is thinking than you're worried about what God thinks. And he continues on, and this becomes a big lesson. And he tells them later, there's nothing that goes into a person from outside that can defile them, but the things that come out of a person are, are what defiles a person. And so what he's saying, they're so worried about their eating laws. We were talking about this a second ago. Their food laws were a big deal. You know, there were certain things they weren't allowed to eat, certain things they were. Um, they had clean and unclean. And then in this chapter, we see he declared all foods clean. Um, so they're really worried about that as if that's the big issue. But they're not worried. They want to be blind to the actual sin in their lives. And we get a, a long list um, in verses 22-ish. Um, of sin. And so I'm going to guess you probably saw sin from your own life in this list um, because we all sinners, we That's all right. have sin. And even if it wasn't listed um, exactly, we still fall into this, into this category. And so as we are being followers of the way, what I see here about Jesus, first, I see Jesus is more concerned about following God. He wants to please God. He does not He's not worried about pleasing man. He's not worried about their approval. And so if we are to be followers of the way, we're supposed to be more concerned with following God than how we look to others, how what others think about us. We should not be concerned about that. We should be more concerned about the status of our hearts and what God thinks of us. 
Um, and that's the other thing I see. Jesus cares about the hearts of the people. These are his enemies. Jesus knows these are going to be the, the ones that really put the nail uh, in the cross, I guess. Um, these are really the ones that chase after him nonstop. We are going to see this nonstop for the rest of the book. And Jesus still cares about pointing out their sin. He still cares about giving them a chance to know this God that they're missing out on. Yeah. You know, they're concerned about what uh, what's clean food and what's unclean food. What uh, clean hands are, what unclean hands are. Jesus is pointing out the difference in what a clean heart is and what a clean heart is not. And that's the part they don't really care for. Now, I want to point us to uh, a couple of last pieces of this story. I'm going to preach on the last part of chapter 7 where Jesus heals this man at the but end. But I called in the big dog. This is a passage, the mother and her right. faith. This is a passage that has always like stumped me. And okay. so I called in that. All right. So this lady that comes to Jesus, when, when she comes to Jesus and Jesus... If you just read this on surface level, it sounds like Jesus is really mean to her, right? He says, "He says, why, why should we give uh, you the, the 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 benefits when I'm, I'm trying to give it to the children? The dogs don't deserve it. The children deserve it." And so everybody's listening to this, and they're thinking the Israelites are the children, and these the, these Gentiles are the dogs. And like this is not the Jesus that we are normally accustomed to listening to. Now, I want to I wanna just kind of point you to something because I want to I get this on the front end. Notice the very, uh, the very last verse of this whole chapter. It says, and they were astonished beyond measure, saying, he has done all things well. Okay? So, Jesus is recreating creation. Remember when everything was made at creation? Each time God made, what did he say? He said, it, it is what? Good. It is good. So now they're looking at Jesus and he is doing, making all things well. He is putting it all back together. So here's what I need you to do. I need you to trust Jesus's character on this. And so when it sounds like Jesus is being mean to her, just understand that he is doing all things well, which means even in this moment, he's doing right, even if we're misunderstanding it. And here's, here's what's happening. This story is really better told in the Gospel of Matthew. I like how it starts here in verse 24. It says, There he arose, or from there he arose and went to the region of Tyre and Sidon, and he entered a house and wanted no one to know it, but he could not be hidden. Well, he can't be hidden because it's like uh, lighting a, a fire in the middle of the woods. The, the woods that are dark and creepy, instantly everything's drawn to the flame. They're drawn to light, okay? He is the light of the world. So he can't hide. Everything's being drawn to him. But what we have here is a lady who comes to Jesus and she's desperate. Now, everything on her resume that, that it's talking about here, a woman who's Greek, a Syrophoenician by birth with a demon-possessed daughter, everything on her resume wanted to make people want to walk away from her. She, her gender, her ethnicity, this demonic oppression, Matthew says even the disciples wanted Jesus to just leave this woman alone. Let's pretend like she's not mm -hmm. there. Listen, Jesus didn't come into the world to pretend that problems didn't exist. He came to he came to get them and to deal with them right off the bat. Now, when you're reading through this story, this is one of the only times Jesus goes into Gentile areas, so non-Jewish areas. Um, the Canaanites, these people are the ancient enemies of the Jews. So the Jews already didn't like these people. Jesus starts talking to this woman the way that everybody that's following him, the way they would talk to her. And it's, and it, and it, and it makes an impact on them because they're recording this story because it was so out of character. So he's acting like them, and they're going, hold up, this doesn't sound right. Well, because it, it wasn't right. So Jesus shows that Jesus, Jesus then turns around. And I want, I want you to notice that, that no one, even, in, even the apostles, were ready to listen to this woman. But Jesus stops. And he has this exchange for him, which seems to make everybody uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And Jesus responds and then turns it all around. What does he do for her? He heals her daughter, and then Jesus is more impressed with her faith than anything he's seen in Israel. As a matter of fact, Jesus is really only impressed by two people in all of these stories. One was a Gentile man, and the other is this Gentile woman. 
She is, she is, a, a, she's a mom who's desperate. And Jesus is the son of a father who also knows what it is to send his son into some dangerous land. Okay, so in this story, Jesus is showing that even in the land of the Gentiles, the fields are ripe for harvest. So what he does, Jesus rejects the urging of the disciples to reject this woman, and he allows this woman to speak. When you read through this story, Mark is telling this story in a way where he wants you to understand this lady, she is content with whatever Jesus can do for her. I love this idea about scraps falling from the table because what it means is we're all undeserving of his grace. We're all sinful animals, and uh, but we can be glad because there's enough for me at his table. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, Jesus treats her the way everybody else was treating her, and they, they think it's odd. And he goes, you're right, because this isn't the way it's supposed to be. You think you're better than her, but I want you to watch her faith. So he's been arguing with Pharisees, law keepers, about washing hands, <laughs> and goes into a land of Gentiles and says, let me show you with somebody with really dirty hands. Let me show you their faith. This is a powerful story. Jesus is showing everybody's got a chair at the Father's table if they want it. We want you to keep reading. This is great stuff. We'll, uh, we'll see you again tomorrow. Very Orville fell asleep, so <laughs> I can put people to sleep. All right? All right, have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. He listened to the whole thing. That straw was in the video the whole